it started with a concert, the sync was shot, then the idea of having the freedom to, to tell a story, and then the content itself, which is awesome. If you cut a scene, I think, and you cut to another scene, I think you, there's a jarring between the audience and uh, the characters. And I think with a one-take film, you're instantly with the characters and you're with them all the way. The second that I heard that it was a one-shot film, I was like, right, so that's my job. As much as I know that this is a film, this is a movie, this is a TV project, like, all of us have trouble kind of actually putting a genre on it or like a title to it because of the nature of the thing. It's actually a live theatre piece that's being filmed. As she gets down, we need to get down to the eighth, pretty much the eighth, maybe ninth. There'll be quite a lot of splashing. But everyone is working really hard to get this done and I don't think anyone came into this underestimating the amount of work that's going to go into creating such a technically difficult piece. And I think this is a really an experimental way of showing experimental work. I think a lot of people in the world today are kind of emotionally disconnected from the world around them. I think um, politically and sociologically we're being forced to become more isolated as individuals. And I think the whole idea, the principle behind this story was to have a character who's closed off blossom again, re-engage with people. The thing that I wanted to kind of achieve with this is to take someone that is as neutral as possible, someone who we could, whoever we are and whatever our backgrounds are, we can kind of map ourselves into to some extent. We knew the characters we wanted, what the guy needed to be and what the outsider needed to be. We, we settled on Blohine pretty quickly. Uh, I, I, we w did a walk through the building. I got to know the history of everything. I got to see all the art and all of the history that's here, like the suffragettes and the first black mayor. And I learned about the fire and everything, the firefighters who saved the place. And I genuinely went home. I walked out like in floods of tears. She was a pretty instant. Uh you know, success. Uh, as was Omid, when we were looking for someone who could be a really serious actor, who had a little bit of the entertainer about them, also had the gravitas, had the kind of age and wisdom. Play it to camera at that point. Beguile. Yeah, we're the answer. Bewitch, entice, enrapture, mesmerise. My character being the guide is like the spirit, the spirit of the building. And um, we've chosen a, a kind of, it's almost like the archetype of the MC, someone who presents but is flamboyant. I, I like to think he's kind of smouldering and theatrical. Magic realism is one of my kind of, is the genre that I would probably best um, use to describe this particular film. What I wanted to do was to take a naturalistic, real character um, on a journey through a magical and surreal setting. You can think of, you know, The Wizard of Oz, you know, Dorothy on her journey. You can think of Alice in Wonderland and her journey. You can think of in literature, you know, Dante's Inferno and the Seven Circles of Hell. You can, you can think of lots of parallels of where people have gone on these kind of weird and magical journeys, but they're ordinary people. They're the every man or woman. And then encounter artists who have themselves gone on a journey of discovery have found a way of expressing their own um, obstacles they face themselves and overcome, uh, messages they wanted to say to people and found art as their best way of expression to showcase those so that while the outsider, that person who we are, is themselves going through that journey, they're being helped and aided by people who have already on or gone through that journey themselves and made their own discoveries and found artistic expression. Everybody's really really top of their game like do you know what I mean and they're all like so so quintessentially themselves which is something that is just really kind of beautiful to see it's beautiful to get to see like queer people of color making art in a building that has only ever supported that exact outlet I think the Battersea Arts Centre is one of those places that's had such an amazing myriad number of very different performances and I think this is reflective of the kind of stuff that's been here and uh, is actually part of the building. This film is all hurt. Everyone who's worked in it, everyone who's in it, 
everyone who's thought about it or contributed to it in any way, shape or form, be it funding or like script ideas or auditioning or anything. Everyone is part of this film and that's, my hope is that you just get that. My dad has this really lovely thing that he says to me, anytime I do a show or something, he's like, you're one of the ghosts of that building now. You know, like people pass through and stuff. And the fact that I get to be one of those here is a pretty big thing to get to walk away with.